start getting used to this colour combination. If you're watching the World Cup this year, you're likely to see a lot of fans draped in red and white. They're the colours of Peru's flag, and for Peruvians, this World Cup is of transcendental importance. Why? Because it's the first to include Peru in 36 years. Three and a half decades in which the nation has felt cheated, excluded and unworthy. So no matter how Peru fares in the globe's most important football tournament, most fans of the red and white, known as the Blanqui Roja, feel like they've already won. Y nos estamos organizando desde el 16 de noviembre, un día después de la clasificación, venimos trabajando eh, cánticos, logística, eh, pasajes, todo el itinerario completo de la Blanqui Roja para el mundial, porque tenemos un gran objetivo que es ser hincha de una selección más grande del mundo. 50 fans from this club will join tens of thousands of Peruvians traveling to Russia. Most Peruvians have never seen their country play in a World Cup, so it's history in the making, says co-founder of the fan club, Jesus Bustamante. I think we feel that we want our country as if we were our brother. It's like a love that doesn't matter if we win, if we lose, we don't care who wins. Tampoco, tampoco importa quiénes están jugando, para nosotros la selección representa nuestra patria, por eso es que siempre la apoyamos, sin importar quién está jugando o, o si gana o si pierde. ¿no? And Peruvian fans will be punching above their weight in numbers. Perhaps it's the country's long and many feel unfair absence from the biggest football tournament on the globe. But now that Peru is through, for many, it's just too much of an historic opportunity to miss and they're prepared to pay whatever it costs for what might be a once-in-a-lifetime experience, says travel agent Herman Yop. If you want to go to one game, uh, you're going to spend at least $6,000. Okay, then drop. If you want to go to three games, 10000 uh, and that wasn't at the beginning. Uh, but the thing is, right now, if you want to go and, and, and want go to the, to the three games, you're going to spend at least $20,000. Per passenger, so and people are paying. People they, they want to go and and how is I was telling you, they uh, they don't care where they're going to stay, how they're going to move. They just want to go and see the game. Everything else is optional or is it's, it's superfluous. The attitude seems to be pay now and deal with the consequences later. Of the 32 countries taking part in the World Cup, Peru ranks number seven in terms of the amount of fans traveling to Russia. That's meant a bonanza for travel agents, despite the fact that the cheapest package to Russia costs at least 40 times the monthly minimum wage. More spending on clothes, food and drink and electrical goods like televisions could boost economic growth by up to half a percentage point, according to some economists. But Peru's World Cup entry could also spark a downturn, says the author of The Goal Formula, a book about statistics and football. All these expenditures are not for free. Somebody has to pay for them. And actually employment is not moving that fast in Peru for the last three to four quarters. So the credit channel is moving a lot. The other negative element that we see here is that for months and for the next month, we will be just absorbed. We will be just focused on the soccer games and we will ju be just focused on the World Cup and we will pay less attention to our duties. The productivity in general will go down and so as we have this boost in GDP basically due to consumption, we will have a negative shock in GDP. There are fans and then there are super fans like the man behind the Facebook page La Ruta del Incha, or The Fan's Path. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Eduardo Apaza, de La Ruta del Incha. También soy miembro de La Blanquirroja, la hinchada de la, de la selección peruana. Y bueno, he estado en los 20 partidos de la selección, entonces súper contento por la clasificación. For two years, Apaza followed Peru through every one of its 18 qualifying matches, traveling throughout South America. It's one of the world's toughest groups to qualify from, but Apasa decided he was going to be with Peru's squad come what may. Needless to say, Apasa will go to Russia. 
Travel logistics have by now become a speciality. Si algo tengo puedo exigirles a ellos, que igual yo me siento en, con ningún derecho de pedirles nada, pero si tuviera sería eso, que, que dejen todo en el partido, porque de ahí el resultado, o sea, es, es, es del deporte, ¿no? Puede pasar de todo. Entonces, yo les pido a ellos que, que salgan muertos de la cancha, porque igual nosotros las, hacemos lo mismo en la tribuna. But the vast majority of Peruvians will be watching the matches on televisions, many of them newer, bigger and better. And few are immune to World Cup fever. Even collectible football cards and albums have taken the country by storm. Filling the albums before the tournament begins has become a national obsession, and for some, a little earner. Todo comenzó como también juntando figuritas. Quería llenar el álbum y vi que que había negocio, ¿no? Players like Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Peruvian striker Paulo Guerrero are the most sought after, he says. Along with rare cards of football legends like Pelé and the national crests of the teams. In reality, it's a little more, because, as I said, in 2014 there was also people who changed, but now there are more, because Peru is going to the World Cup. When they first came on sale, the albums, costing around $7, made by the Italian company Panini, sparked queues around the block. And there was tension and anger when retailers ran out of stock. The lucrative demand was not lost on fraudsters, and police seized around 20,000 fake albums worth some $350,000 in April. In a continent where football is venerated, Jack Hurtado has been religiously collecting football memorabilia for 14 of the 36 years that Peru has been absent from the World Cup. Peru's qualification was, well, I'll let him explain. La emoción fue indescriptible, ¿no? Como hincha, como coleccionista, la vivimos un poco más, ¿no? Porque estamos detrás de los artículos, detrás de las colecciones, buscándolos, en una intensa recopilación. Eh, he pegado toda mi vida figuritas de países que no eran los míos, de selecciones que no eran las mías, en los mundiales. Entonces, luego del 15 de noviembre la historia cambió. Volvimos a un mundial y la emoción y la expectativa fue al tope, ¿no? Y se fue, se vio graficado en todo lo que ha sucedido. Esta especie de histeria colectiva por la gente, los peruanos por los álbumes, por las figuritas, eh, por la industria del fútbol en general. Hurtado has turned his home into a museum, which members of the public can visit through his Facebook page. He has the kind of coveted objects that make football geeks drool, such as a shirt signed by Diego Maradona. He has so many visits booked that he must stay in Lima to watch the football, as Peruvians have become football consumers par excellence. The sport has united Peruvians in a way nothing or no one else could. For a people used to disappointment, they already feel like champions, and their team has yet to play a single match.